Yes or no? Depends on which title I picked for this video. Yes, you can now rent DaVinci Resolve Studio for a monthly fee of $30 or £25. But no, DaVinci Resolve Studio is not switching to a subscription model. Blackmagic have just announced that you can now rent DaVinci Resolve Studio if you want to. So you can see they posted this yesterday, introducing a new way to rent DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now individuals can rent a DaVinci Resolve Studio license within Blackmagic Cloud using their personal profile. So this actually isn't new, kind of. This has been available for at least sort of 12 to 18 months, I think it is, but it was only available if you set up an organization within Blackmagic Cloud. Now, if you have a personal account, you can do this as well. So it just means that if you wanna get hold of Studio for a month, you wanna try it for a month before you buy it, or if you're in the middle of a small job and they need some magic masking doing or whatever, you can hop onto Blackmagic Cloud, rent it for that single month, use it for that month, and then when you're done, you just cancel your subscription, you won't be able to use it anymore, and you can jump back over to the free version. I can already hear the cynics <laughs> typing away. And to be honest, it's understandable. So the gut reaction to this is, oh no, DaVinci Resolve Studio is going subscription, i.e. you're gonna have to pay monthly for an ever and ever and ever to keep using DaVinci Resolve Studio, and they're gonna take away the main buy once license. I don't think that's the case. I still don't think that's the case. Whether I'm just being overly optimistic, I don't think I am. I've chatted with Blackmagic employees quite a bit at different trade shows, IBC, NAB, and they're all against the idea. I even got the opportunity to sit down and have a pretty casual chat with Grant Petty himself, and he very much doesn't give the impression that he wants to go over to a subscription. He's been very vocal in the past that he doesn't like subscription models. The red line that I can't cross is tying people's work up unless they keep paying every month. That feels like a mafia style, you know, payoffs to keep your business running. It just doesn't feel good at all. And at the very core of everything Blackmagic does, every decision we make is to make our customers more free, creatively free. You know, it's empowering their creative freedom. That's the core of what we do. So as long as Grant Petty, he's the CEO of Blackmagic, as long as he's in charge, I do not believe they will be jumping over to a proper subscription model anytime soon. Now, Blackmagic Cloud is actually a bit of a steal, to be honest. I've talked about the Blackmagic Cloud in the past. I think it's a really good thing, especially for being a working editor, and you wanna be able to work with others, collaborate with others, have some cloud storage, put some projects in the cloud, get people to review those projects, all that sort of stuff. You can do an awful lot with the Blackmagic Cloud. So I might have to do an updated Blackmagic Cloud overview video, which might be a job for next week. But really quickly, let me show you how this works. So I'm already logged into Blackmagic Cloud. You can literally go to any of the Blackmagic Design websites. There is a login box on all of them, and that will take you to the Blackmagic Cloud. Sign up for an account if you need to. And now we have this, License Manager. If we give that a click, we've got Assigned to Me, so I can see all the licenses assigned to me, and I've got Owned by Me. And I currently have none on this account, so if I click on Add, it takes me to the account page, and here we can just kind of customize our subscription. So as mentioned, it's pretty good. You can get one terabyte of cloud storage. That also includes a project library, and 20 presentations, that's £12.50 a month in the UK. So one terabyte is actually an awful lot of cloud storage because you're probably going to turn everything into proxies and upload just the proxies to keep things small. One terabyte of proxies, it's actually a massive amount, it's a huge amount. Or you can go lower, 500 gig, or you can go massive, one petabyte for 12 and a half grand. Now, you don't actually need to buy that. You can use a free account so you can keep your Blackmagic Cloud free. You get two gig of cloud storage. You will need to add a project library if you want to store your projects in the cloud, but you don't have to. If you purely want the DaVinci Resolve rental license, 25 pounds a month, we can come in here, turn that to a one, 25 quid a month plus tax. We hit continue and we purchase that license. When that's done, you just need to either assign it to you or you can just log in to DaVinci Resolve on your computer and it will just pull down that license. Now, I've already done that on a different account. I've purchased 
a DaVinci Resolve Studio license. So I'm just gonna log in, select my personal account and log in. And that is it. It says it's been activated, we can hit continue, and then it's just gonna open up DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, obviously this won't actually upgrade your current installation. If you've got the free version installed, uninstall that, download the studio version, install that, and then when you open this up, it'll ask you for the login, you log in, and off you go. Now, yes, you do need to be connected to the internet the very first time you log in, because you'll ping the Blackmagic cloud servers, whatever, and then it'll pull down that studio license, so then you can start using studio, and you're good to go. But you don't need to be connected to the internet every single time you want to use studio. It seems to work in exactly the same way as the old fashioned manual license key does. Make sure you reconnect to the internet every now and again, and that will revalidate your license. And as long as you keep doing that, you're good to go. In the meantime though, it won't ping you, it won't ask you to log in every single time you open it up, which means if you're on a flight, you can still open up DaVinci Resolve Studio. And one of the benefits of DaVinci Resolve Studio is all of the AI stuff is local. You can still run everything as well, even when you're not connected to the internet, which is one of those really beneficial things about DaVinci Resolve Studio, which a lot of people don't talk about. Transcriptions, magic masks, all the fancy AI, it's all local. Don't need the internet at all. If you're done with it on this computer, deactivate, jump onto a different computer, log in, or we'll reactivate the license on that computer, and you're good to go. Or you could assign it to someone else. So from the website, you click on assign, they will need to have a Blackmagic Cloud account, which they can get completely for free. Then you just assign the license to their account instead, and then they can log in and start using Studio, which is pretty cool, especially for someone like me, for example. If I was working with an editor, they were on the free version, I wanted them to do some funky stuff on the Studio version, I could just temporarily assign them a license, they do what they need to do, and when they're done, I can just revoke the access. So for that, it's pretty cool. Now that price, 25 quid or $30, is expensive if it was a never ending, non-stop for the rest of your life subscription. I was gonna say it's more expensive than Adobe, but I don't, I don't think it is. I think that's about what they charge. And that is a never ending for the rest of your life subscription. Anyway, if it was an ongoing never ending subscription, it's a little bit pricey. But this isn't designed for that. It's a one-off thing. It's You need it for a few months because you want to trial it or you want someone else to jump into studio or you've got a job and you need to, you know, get access to some of those features. The option to go and buy the proper one-off studio license is still available. And I think that's the key thing. So there you go. I just wanted to hop on and give you this news. I think it's pretty neat. More options is never a bad thing, but I completely understand the skepticism. Cynicism? Skepticism? Don't know. The doubters out there. I understand it. But fingers crossed, <laughs> it stays exactly as it is. We have the option to buy a license outright, or if you want to rent it, you can. Having both of those options is a winner for everyone. Take away this option, though, and it's going to be a bad day. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and feelings. See you next time.